weapons in the 30-year war against cancer. The leafy palms, the beautiful scenery of Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic, an idyllic setting for some very serious science. The man in charge is chemist Eloy Rodriguez. I'm kind of an explorer. You know, I take off my lab coat and I put on my hat and I go off looking for new medicines from plants and from scorpions and ants, anything that makes a natural product. The substances from the plants and marine life that will be studied at the new Cornell Biodiversity Laboratory have long been used as Caribbean folk remedies. When we visited the island a few days ago, workers were getting the building ready for the researchers who will arrive next month. The multi-million dollar facility is being financed largely by a foundation run by New York labor lawyer Theodore Keel. One member of the scientific team, Dr. Lorraine Gudis, chairman of Cornell's pharmacology department, will put her scientists here in New York to work on some of the substances from Punta Cana. A former Harvard professor, she's been working for 15 years on the role of vitamin A in battling cancer. As an innovator in the area of nutrition, did you have a tough time in the early years? But I would say that the atmosphere was a little more hostile than it is now. But there have always been some in the medical profession who have felt that this is very important. Um, but they were more or less outcasts in the past. They were. And you were one of those outcasts. That's right. <laughs> Dr. Mitchell Gaynor leads the clinic at Cornell's Center for Complementary Medicine. A patient, Dorothy Golubuski, is a Manhattan insurance agent diagnosed with stage three breast cancer in 1997. She had surgery, chemotherapy, radiation. Dr. Gaynor prescribed a nutritional program. I started with many different green drinks and um, supplements, um, juice, I juice every day. It's really been a total lifestyle change. And how are you doing? I feel great. I feel a lot better than I did before. Gaynor, who also uses conventional treatment, says the lab in the Dominican Republic is important because the remedies used for centuries in non-Western medicine will now be examined scientifically. Many of the most important drugs that we use in pharmacology today were discovered or basically herbal products that were turned into drugs and they came to the attention of the pharmaceutical industry because of their use by indigenous people. Gaynor adds that reducing stress through meditation and yoga is critical to strengthening the immune system. He leads a group twice a month at New York Hospital. Dorothy Golubuski attends religiously. Her previous doctor, though, was skeptical and patronizing. He said, well, you know, if you want to pay the money to do these things, and but there's been no proof. Dr. Rodriguez, leader of the plant research team, says the skepticism is based on ignorance. When you don't really understand something or you don't have the information, your first response as a profession is to call it quackery. Is the ultimate cure or cures for cancers in herbal medicine? Well, I don't know if it's the ultimate cure, but I think what we're seeing is this idea that you bring together herbal medicine and so-called Western medicine. Other countries also have much to offer, as we reported two weeks ago. For instance, in Valhalla, Dr. Sophie Chen is working on a combination of Chinese herbs for prostate cancer. As part of this new wave in medicine, a new approach to teaching. Dr. Mary Charlson, director of Cornell's Center for Complementary and Integrative Medicine, led a seminar to correct misconceptions about complementary therapy. The lack of knowledge in the area, I think, makes it harder for the profession to accept it, but in the meantime, millions of our patients are, are treating themselves and we need the information in order to give them the kind of advice that they need and want. The feeling you get from talking to patients and doctors alike is that the patients are leading the revolution. Dr. Stephen Borokoff, new director of the NYU Cancer Center, a conventional medical institution, said about 80% of our patients want to participate in complementary medicine. We have to meet their needs yet be sure that they don't abandon conventional therapies. Winds of change in the medical world, and doctors Max Gomez and Ian Smith will report about some new directions in conventional medicine later in this program. Sue, Jim. Okay, thank you.